In June 2017, 72 people lost their lives in the Grenfell Tower fire. I was phoned up at four in the morning by a very well-known um, technical architect who said, turn your television on. So I did, and I saw something I just wish I'd never had to see. The disaster caused a full-scale inquiry into the shortfallings and disregard for the safety of the block's inhabitants. We owe that to the families, to the people who have lost loved ones, friends and the homes in which they lived. Since then, the tower's been a tragic reminder on London's skyline, forever showing the consequences of inadequate construction, safety and maintenance. In the preceding four years, apartment blocks nationwide have been surveyed to see if they share similar fire safety risks. Combustible cladding became just one of a list of issues that were a cause for concern. Across the UK, it's estimated over 600,000 high-rise homeowners are now affected by these findings, as well as millions more in medium-rise towers. And with a vacuum left over who's going to pay the bills, leaseholders face costly invoices for remediation, insurance, service charges and waking watch fire wardens. An economy does not want a million people defaulting on their mortgage payments and going into repossession at the same time. That is a very scary thought, especially at a time when our country is still <laughs> grappling with the worst economic crisis in 300 years. Huge numbers of people, especially leaseholders, are stuck in the middle. They are living in unsafe homes. They can't sell and they're being asked to foot the bill. Mr Speaker, we're determined that no leaseholder should have to pay uh, for the uh, unaffordable costs of fixing safety defects that uh, they didn't cause and uh, uh, no fault of their own. There are people's lives at stake here. 72 have already paid. It shouldn't have been that in the first place, so don't let it happen again. It's as simple as that. I'm Deep Mystery. I live here in Southwark in my two-bed flat with my husband and three children. Immediately after the fire at Grenfell, we had some engineers on site who were assessing the external walls. We were then sent a letter to say, you have very similar cladding to Grenfell and we need to get it off ASAP. Within weeks, we had scaffolding up, contractors on site, ripping the stuff away, literally pulling it because it was glued on and they had to pull, hang off it, tear away and it was quite brutal watching them do that. We were also told that we needed some internal work doing so we had some fire suppression systems put in place so we have a smoke, an automatic smoke vent put in place. We had a brand new fire alarm which was connected throughout the building. Um, we had some work done to our fire doors and some compartmentation to our dry riser cupboards. It was all done, it was all signed off, and from that point onwards we thought, well, okay, we're fine. We are now safe, we don't have to worry. So when it comes to us trying to sell last year, this is February 2020, we were told we won't be able to complete a sale because the buyer probably will not be able to get a mortgage. They require an EWS form, um, it's, it's going to need some intrusive surveys in order to complete that form and we don't know how long it will be. We were told it could be anything up to 10 years. At that point I just broke down and thought that can't be right. Trapped where we are with three children growing up in one bedroom. It's not appropriate, it's not appropriate for my religion to have mixed genders, children in the same room. I want some privacy for them and we are outgrowing our small home, we need more space. But we can't move on, it's, it's as simple as that. Deeper's building is managed by Peabody. They said, We acted quickly to remove ACM cladding from Success House as soon as it was identified in 2017 and did not pass on the costs of this onto leaseholders. Since then, there have been several changes to RICS guidance and government advice, and we now know that other work will be needed in order to obtain EWS certification. We own or manage over 4,500 buildings and have to prioritise blocks based on the level of risk. 
we are working with the building contractor to get the work completed as soon as possible. Deepa is but one example of a first-time buyer who's unable to sell her property. She and many others require an EWS1 certificate that banks and even estate agents are demanding to see in order for her to put her two-bed flat on the market. So an EWS1 form is an external wall safety form. Uh, and it's a document that confirms whether or not a building is safe. You've got A1 and A2, which means that the building is absolutely fine. You've got A3, which means that there could be a requirement for remediation and you need to get a further assessment done. You've got B1, which means there's flammable materials, but no remediation is required. And you've got B2, which is fail grade, and there's flammable material and it does need remediation. These forms were brought in as a way to give people a way to confirm that their building was safe. But the problem was that actually lenders started asking for them on, on a very, very large scale. And when you've got millions of people that suddenly need one of these forms for their property to be mortgageable, you get a real bottleneck. And the uh, circumference of that bottleneck is tiny. There are a few hundred people who are qualified to fill out these forms, a few million people who need them. There's a huge amount of importance on these forms, and I'm not sure that they actually are an effective way of assessing the safety of a building. I talk to people who are in buildings, they've had two EWS1 assessments. One says the building is completely safe, the other one says it's not. Clearly, if, if someone can sign off a building using this form and say it's safe, and someone else can say that it is not safe, uh, that form is not doing its job at all. And I think it's perhaps brought far more problems than, than it has solved. First-time homeowner Stephanie lives in Croydon. Her flat's fitted with non-ACM cladding and has a litany of other defects, which require costly remediation work to meet fire safety standards. I thought I did the right thing. I was so proud of myself. Now it's probably the worst decision I made. Yes, the cladding, we have an issue there. Technically, I'm of the understanding that if everything was okay behind the cladding, we would have actually passed the EWS1 form. But because the developer actually cut corners and didn't install these fire breaks, cut the insulation and installed it poorly, that's the major flag on our EWS1 form. So because of that, even if the Building Safety Fund gave us the money to change the cladding, then we still have to find the funds to sort out what's going wrong behind the walls, because that was regulation at the time, and our developer just didn't comply. Through its recent fire safety bill, the government's pledged around £5 billion to cover the costs of remediation work of high-rise apartments. However, this figure only applies to buildings over 18 metres in height and leaves leaseholders of flats in buildings under that to pay for it themselves, aided by government-backed loans. One remediation specialist called uh, Colmore Tang Construction, they're actually doing the jobs on these buildings. And by their estimations, they estimate that uh, the total cost for the country to remediate the buildings would be 50 billion, which would be 10 times what the government has allocated. If they pass the cost on to us, I don't know where I'm getting that money. It's, it's, it's a lot of money to come up with. I mean, they've not given us a specific cost yet. We know what they've applied for the fund for. It looks about 47,000 per flat. It's a potential bankrupt situation. Everything I've worked hard for over the last five and a half years in this flat is gone. I'm back at square one, saving a new deposit, trying to write off bankruptcy. I mean, if I'm totally honest, I can't get my head around what will happen if this bill lands on my doorstep. Stephanie's building was built by Higgins and managed by Clarion Housing Group. They said, As the landlord, the first priority for Clarion Housing Group is the safety of our residents and leaseholders living in Bedford House. We are working to ensure that remedial works at Bensham Lane take place as soon as possible. No social housing resident will be asked to pay towards the remedial work, and we will exhaust all other options before asking any leaseholder to make a contribution. A Higgins spokesperson said, The safety of residents is of paramount importance to us. We can confirm that Higgins were the original contractor for the Bedford House project, and we are working closely with Clarion Housing Group to review and resolve the issues raised. The plight of homeowners like Stephanie has become a political arm wrestle. You have to 
feel enormous sympathy for people who are living at home today in, in a property which was in many cases their dream home, their first step into home ownership, uh, the beginnings of their lives together in cases of uh, uh, some couples uh, and, and they're stuck now with a property which is inherently dangerous, uh, is not safe from fire uh, and uh, they can't do anything about it, they're stuck. Uh, they're waiting in the end for government to act. I don't think as a nation we can tolerate this scandal any longer. The Telegraph did ask the government for an interview, but no one was available. They did provide this statement. The government is bringing forward the biggest improvements to building safety in a generation through our Building Safety Bill. Government intervention does not absolve building owners of the responsibility to make their buildings safe and our new tax and levy will ensure developers make a significant contribution towards these remediation costs. The building safety crisis is not going to be solved purely by passing the financial and legal liability from freeholders onto leaseholders. They don't have the funds, they've got nowhere to go to get the funds and that's what my constituents are saying to us, you know, you're not going to make my building safe, I can't make my building safe, we need help. We need support and they don't feel anybody's listening. A lot of the people, this is their first step on the property ladder. So these people are not able to move out of these buildings into new homes and they're not able to allow other people to make their first step onto the property ladder. So it is actually going to snarl up the bottom part of the property market and we're going to see that feed through over the next 12 to 18 months. This could go off and create another problem in the mortgage market overall as well. So you've got a large number of people who probably purchased with a low deposit and those buyers are particularly at risk of falling into negative equity. So if they're forced to sell or they go bankrupt and they have to sell, those properties are going to be worth significantly less than what they borrowed to pay for them. And what we're going to be left with is a couple of million people who cannot sell and eventually they are going to hit crunch point because Many of them so far are, as I said, in this holding zone and that's accentuated by the fact that they're waiting for funding to remediate these buildings. They're waiting for sign-off from the Building Safety Fund. They're waiting for their developers and their freeholders to work out who's going to pay. What is slowly starting to happen is those leaseholders are getting sent bills of tens of thousands of pounds, some as much as £100,000 to remediate their buildings. And it's going to hit what I think it could be quite a catastrophic point if you have millions of people whose homes are suddenly worth much, much less than they were. The consequences for the housing market could be quite terrifying. But a lot of people are, right now are, are quite blissfully unaware of it because they own a detached home in the countryside somewhere and they think that these issues are very removed from them. Leaseholder and former Lehman Brothers employee Steve Day bought his home in Royal Artillery Keys in 2016. He and 417 other leaseholders are facing bills of a minimum of £31,000 to cover remedial work costs, not to mention exorbitant service charges. There seems to be a political stalemate, nothing seems to be being done, yet the bankruptcies are happening. With the backing of 43 bishops and a number of MPs, Steve's fighting for legislation called the Polluter Pays Bill to be reviewed by Parliament. It would make building developers responsible for paying for repair work. We're saying let's support the responsibility across all of those that are responsible. And crucially, let's not wait for 10 years to get the money, let's get that now. Because we forget that it's not a money situation, it's a life and death situation. This is about safety. We need the money in now, we need the remediation projects to start, and we can't burden the taxpayer. And our solution deals with all of those. I wish I could say it will never happen again, but it, it, it could happen again tonight. It could happen at any time, because there's still many buildings that are Grenfell Towers in other places. So we have a huge job to do as a construction industry to make sure these buildings are not built like this again and that the buildings that do find that they have huge problems of fire safety need to be remedied just as quickly as possible. Everybody needs to come in on it and I mean that includes the government. I'm quite ashamed of our industry and I'm really ashamed of the government. They are working far too slowly. The building regulations are changing but they're nowhere near what they should be. There's a really nasty irony with the building safety crisis, which is that 
none of these homes that are now deemed unsafe were any more safe before the Grenfell fire. They were just as dangerous then as they are now. The difference is just that anybody in an affected building now has to pay far more money. It's quite mind-blowing that something like this is happening in our country. I'm consistently shocked by it. Yeah.